It's been almost two years since I created my photo breakdown series and it's been a long time since I've created another one and I have no idea why I stopped. But in today's video, we're gonna break down this photograph of Daphne and we're gonna cover todo el pedo. We're gonna cover everything from the pre-production phase to the wardrobe, but also give you some insight to, as I was shooting, what decisions led me to actually capture this photograph. We'll also look into some of the gear choices that I made for this specific shot and then finalize the photograph looking at some of the Capture One techniques that I used and also quickly look at my Photoshop editing. Before we start, I do want to talk about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people on topics including photography, productivity, business, and more. Check out Skillshare's online classes, which include a combination of video lessons and class projects. One of the classes I just finished watching was Visual Appeal, The Art of Model Photography by Van Stiles. One of my favorite things about this class is that you get an in-depth look into how he shoots during his photo shoots. And the biggest thing that I learned after watching this class is that I definitely want to take more risks with my composition and my angles after watching Van Styles shoot. And what makes this class even better is that it's under 45 minutes. So it's something that fit perfectly with my busy schedule. Now is the perfect opportunity to start learning new skills. For everything Skillshare offers, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. For a limited time, use the link in the description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. This entire photo shoot was inspired by color and the first element that I needed was the wardrobe. And the wardrobe is what inspired the whole photo shoot, but I had to mix and match the wardrobe with the location. So the location was actually inspired by another local photographer named Benny, an amazing natural light photographer here in South Texas. And about a year ago, he did a photo shoot at this abandoned Toys R Us here that we have in McAllen. And I figured that the wardrobe and the location from Toys R Us with the two mixes of the color that we were gonna get this beautiful color mixture and that we were gonna really get something that was going to pop. Whenever I set up a photo shoot, I typically like to shoot during golden hour because it provides those opportunities for golden hour, but also here in Texas, the summer heat is just scorching hot. So there's no way that we were gonna be able to survive any time earlier than six o'clock. And even though I didn't capture any dramatic clouds during this photo shoot, it didn't really matter because the whole concept of this shoot was to be working with the color that was provided with the wardrobe and the location. As for the gear, I used the Sony a7 III for this photograph along with the Sigma 35 millimeter. Now my go-to setup is to always use a 400 watt strobe along with either a 36 inch modifier and a 48 inch modifier. But in this specific example, it was a little bit of a windy day and we wanted something a little bit more portable. So I went with a 36 inch Westcott rapid box. And on this specific shoot, I also used the Explore 400 Pro. Now my settings for this camera, they were all dictated because of that bright sun. And I clearly remember this day, it was extremely bright. There was no clouds whatsoever. So the sun was kind of just scorching through. So I was at 8,000 shutter speed and at aperture 2.2. And the reason for 2.2, there's really mainly two reasons. One, because it was a really bright day, but also 2.2 provides me with a little bit more detail on texture on the face. So shooting at 2.2 isn't as bad as you would think. I know a lot of people, when they buy these lenses that have these low aperture numbers, they want to really always use 1.4 to blur out the background. But if you're really into skin retouching, shooting at these higher aperture numbers is gonna provide more detail in the face. Let's go ahead and jump into Capture One and kind of give you my breakdown of how I got this shot. Now this first shot is the natural light photograph. Now typically I'll like to capture just a natural light shot just so that I'm metering for the background. Since I shoot a lot of high speed sync, the question I get a lot is, do I use a light meter? How am I metering for the shot? And essentially what I'm doing is I'm basically doing a natural light photograph. I'm metering for the background. In other words, I want as much detail without any blown out highlights if I can, 
or no areas that are too dark in my background. So this was a good starting point. And typically when I start my photo shoots, what I like to tell the model is I'm gonna set the base for the pose. So in other words, just I'm gonna give you a general idea. So for this first spot, I basically told Daphne, I just want you to stand here. I also wanna get that color in the background and I want you to add a nice flow to your posing because a lot of times models will be very robotic. If I just put them up against the wall, they literally think sometimes that I want them to stay in that position the entire time. And what I try to emphasize to them is that I'm just giving you a general idea and a starting point. Go ahead and give me some ideas as you're shooting because we're a team and we're gonna build up this shot together. And Daphne was doing an amazing job to start off at this photo shoot. After I got my natural light photograph, this is when I started adding my strobe light and trying to balance out the light with my vision for the shot. And as I said earlier, Daphne did an awesome job just adding some nice flow to the posing. Now, if you want to your images to have a more natural look, because I get that question a lot. People are always asking me, it's like, Eli, I looked at your photograph and I like how natural the photograph looks. It doesn't look like you added a strobe. And one of the biggest tips that I can give you guys and one of the biggest mistakes that I used to make when I was first learning high speed sync was I would always use the sun as my rim light and then I would put opposite of the sun the key light. And what that ended up doing is that because of the physics of light, if the sun's on this side, there should really be no light coming from this direction unless you have like the reflected light and so forth, but it's gonna give you that strobe-like look. Now, that's not bad by no means, I still do it, but now I'm a little bit more aware of when I'm gonna do it. So typically, and the big main tip here is, if you want your photos to look a little bit more natural, keep the, your key light in the same direction as the sun. So that's what I did on this shot, I kept it the sun was on the right, so I kept my key light on the right. I was still getting that nice rim light, and I was just enhancing the light or sunlight that was already coming in from that direction and just giving it a little bit more pop than what the sun was providing. So as you can see here, Daphne was doing a fantastic job just giving me a lot of great shots. She was giving me a really awesome candid poses, and this is the shot that I ended up going with for this first series. Now, typically when I first start shooting during a photo shoot, I usually use those as a warm up, just trying to communicate to the model on my vision for the shoot. But also, you know, I really got lucky during this photo shoot because typically I don't really get my favorite shots until like after the first 30 minutes, but Daphne was really just adding a nice kind of vibe for the photo shoot. And as I'm shooting, once I find something I really like, what I'm gonna do is a lot of the times is I'll start off with a three quarter shot and then I'll start pulling away. I'll start doing a full body shot to see which one's gonna balance out. And I felt like the color really wasn't being emphasized enough when I was shooting these full body shots. And that's what I was kind of experimenting with. And I ended up liking and enjoying more of the close up. So that's another little tip, make sure when you're shooting, don't just get your close-ups, don't just get your three-quarter shots. Try a variety, just kind of pull back a little bit, see what the full body looks like, the close-up, and then the three-quarters. Now on this day, because the sun was extremely bright, there was no way that I was gonna shoot straight into the sun because there were no clouds to help me out to kind of diffuse the sun. And then it was just too bright. I was not gonna get any detail color from that sky. So my decision was to not even frame the sun in the shot. I moved a little bit more close and I was working more with the reflection from the window, getting that color from the reflection opposed to shooting into the sky. Here I'm gonna show you an example of how bright this sky was. And even here, I'm not even shooting directly into the sun. I kind of have it almost off to the side and it was just extremely bright and I'm not really getting as much blue tones as I wanted. So that was one of the reasons and one of the decisions that led me to shoot right into this window to get that reflection, but also get that color. 
before I show you what I did in Capture One, I kind of just want to give you kind of just a view of some of my favorite photographs from this photo shoot. And here you can see that I was using that technique of not using the sun in the shot so that I can keep all of this nice color detail. And now that I'm looking back at some of these shots, I definitely need to come back and edit some more photographs. And here you can see the example of keeping the light in the same direction as the sun. And then we move to some other spots and kind of, I wanted to eventually come back to the front because we started there like I think around six o'clock and the sun was so bright and I figured I was like, man, maybe I was just hoping that the sun and the clouds and we were gonna get that beautiful, awesome golden hour sunset. So I said, hey, you know what? Let's maybe move to the back of Toys R Us and see if maybe during golden hour we'll come back to the front and work with those color again. So we were right here, we're just kind of killing some time, introducing some popsicle sticks. And then here's the golden hour difference. Now this is a photograph that I probably will come back to, but you can see the difference now. The sun is still bright, still no clouds to help me out, but I'm still just working with these interesting reflections and still working with the color here. And then at the very end, just tried out some colored gels. In Capture One, I didn't do too much. Now typically I like to go for more of a flat look. I like to bring my shadow and black details back and it depends on an image to image basis. So let's take a look at the before and after. So if I click here, this is the before and then the after. Let's quickly look at the layers. And then on this image, I like to add my HDR on a separate layer. And all I think I did here was I just brought up my shadows and my blacks. And a lot of that is so that I can bring some of that hair detail back. I'm going to add the contrast later back into Photoshop. Then I'll add another layer with eyes. And if I push M on the keyboard, that'll show me where I brushed in my mask. So basically what's happening is that it's showing me only where I had brushed in those little details on the eye. Then I had my color layer, which I added just a little bit more magenta tones and in the colors, what I typically do, and here you can see that I selected the blues with the color editor. So if I hit this check mark down, I just really wanted to make those blues pop just a little bit more. And then I did my color balance, shallow, shallows, shadows, midtones, and highlights. And in the shadows, I added some magentas, midtones, oranges, and then yellows in my highlights. Now, if you're new to Capture One and you have no idea what this program is, I already have three videos where I go a lot more in detail as to how to use Capture One. So check those out. I'll have those linked in the description. And then to end it off, I just added just a little bit of exposure, a little bit of brightness. So let me go ahead and ch change it to split view slider and before and then after. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I specifically did in Photoshop. So I'm gonna kind of zoom in here and let's take a look at the before and after. If I hold Alt on the keyboard, this is my before and then my after, before, and then after. So I'm gonna go ahead and start from the bottom. What I first started off with, and as you can see here, we have all of these flyaways and the technique that I find to be the easiest to get rid of these flyaways is with frequency separation. So easily, because I separated the texture and the color, I was able to remove those pretty, pretty easy with frequency separation. And I really didn't do too much skin retouching with frequency separation. So you can see there, I mainly used it for the blemishes and the hair. Then I jumped into my local dodge and burn and my global. So this is the before and then the after. And let's take a look at what I did on my dodge. So I'm gonna hold alt. Those are the areas that, that you see in white here are the areas that I smoothed out the exposure and brightened it up a little bit. And these are the areas that I burned so that I can add some shape and dimension. This is my global. And then this is my burn. And then of course I did some of the eyes and then some more global. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Then I did some color grading. So let me zoom out here. So the color grading, this is where I really made some of the colors pop here. Let me collapse this so you guys could see it. So this is the before 
and then the after here, make it a, making it a little bit more yellow, using some selective color for the skin tone, selective color for the background, some color balance for the background, and then some curves to kind of finalize the color grading. Then I like to merge everything into a smart object and then go into camera raw filter. And then here, this is where I added my final toning to the image. And I think that the HSL and the camera calibration are very underrated in the camera raw editor, especially when you're finalizing your image. So that's what I used for this part here. Then I added some final adjustments and final colors. And what I did here is I added a LUT back here to give it more of this kind of faded blue look and also just bring out some of the colors, bring out some areas to pop a little bit. And then I just burned the, the stomach area. It seemed a little bit too bright and there were some areas over here that were a little bit too bright. And the only reason I caught that is because I sent it to my friend Joe. Now, one of my best pieces of advice when you're editing is to send them to friends. I'll send it to my friend Francisco Hernandez, Marco, Joe, and I just want to get some feedback. And I'm always looking for you know feedback that's going to help me improve. And so if you want to get better at editing, find some friends that you trust, send them those images because they'll give you some feedback and they'll see things that you don't see so you can go back and fix. Let's look at the before and after one more time. So I'm going to hold Alt here. So before and then after. Now keep in mind if you want to see the entire process of me editing, because I know there's going to be one person that's going to comment like, hey man, how come you're not showing us everything? Like I want to see the whole process. Like, hey, I already have nine videos on my YouTube channel. Please check those out. And that concludes today's photo breakdown. Now if you guys love what you see here, don't forget to follow me on Instagram because that's where I post all of my behind the scenes content and all my diagrams, all my light setups, all that good stuff. So don't forget to follow me there and I will see you guys on the next one.